can be useful sometimes. So yeah, that makes sense. All right, everybody. I'm here with Travis Ford DeCastro, one of the starting members of the Penn State Esports Club. Um, That's right. How you doing? I'm great, man. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good myself. Uh, hey, congrats on the landing that job at Riot, by the way. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been it's been quite a ride. So, uh, hey, how are you uh, liking World so far? Uh, oh, man. Well, I can tell you, first of all, right now, the video quality is probably not good enough to show the bags under my eyes, but uh, I can tell you that is not the fault of any late-night shenanigans besides that of watching TSM versus Samsung White last night. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm way into Worlds. It's been incredibly, incredibly fun. Sorry. Uh, group stages this year has been way more interesting, and quarterfinals even, than last year was. Not having a buy into the quarterfinals was great. Uh, best of fives immediately. Uh, all of it is is really fun. My dark horse was Alliance, but that turned out to be a, uh, a huge fluke. Um, so now I gotta go. I gotta go with my 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 favorite being Samsung White and my my dark horse being Cloud Nine. That sounds great. Yeah, I was actually really shocked of uh, Alliance not um, making it out of the group stage. There were one that I thought was almost a definite. I every well okay so. There are some there are some people who think that Alliance is unbeatable, and I'm saying, oh, clearly they have weak points. I personally, despite the fact that Chuck has some great games in jungle, uh, he seems to be less consistent in the team, and their overall team strategy and cohesion really started to fall apart. Uh, I was very surprised and a little a little upset, but hey, I mean, like the pressure is real. Kaboom are scary, clearly. Yeah. Who knew? I actually thought that neither of the wildcard teams would even take a game, so it was actually good to see at least one of them. Well, you yeah. almost weren't wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so close. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, some questions. What was your initial plans with the club when you started it? Uh, okay, so yeah, a little little context. It was summer 2012, I think. Um, it was formed on the fly, really. Ivy Law, the Ivy League of Legends, had started its first collegiate um, tournament in the North, in North America. TESPA had not really done a whole lot with League of Legends yet. Uh, CSL was still firmly rooted in StarCraft II and, and its kind of other niche games. Um, and League of Legends hadn't really kicked off in, the, in terms of collegiate teams, so we put together a team to compete in this, and then as we were going through that process and playing in that uh, short-lived tournament, we realized, wow, we all like League and we like spending time together. Um, and I know that there are other people who do also at Penn State. And it occurred to me, well, why don't we just make a club. I Previously to, to PSUB Esports, I was never one of those guys that was involved in um, like frats or sororities or clubs or any, of, any kinds of those organizations. This was a brand new thing for me, and I believe it was also a brand new thing for a lot of the other founding members, like Nathan Rowe and Brian Horton and Brian Maynard. They also had not been the type of individual to participate in those kind of things. So it was a very new experience for all of us. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you basically said you uh, only started from five members. And now you have, I think... Well, when we... Okay, I, bl I, I think I seem remembering, it's been a long time, that mm -hmm. when, you, when you submit the constitution for a club to be, to be realized as, as real and legitimate at Penn State, you have to have a roster, so to speak, of a certain number of people. So we actually, we went around and we got the signatures and we got a certain number of people. It, it, in, it, the inception of the idea was with um, that first team. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we... Before actually turning in that constitution, we got, I think, between 20 and 30 interested people. All right, so like, how does it feel starting from like the 20 to 30 after the main five, and now you have just 130 due-paying members in the club right now? And that's just the people who are paying dues. There's still well, many I people coming in the meetings. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's awesome. You, you absolutely don't have to be – you should never have to be a due-paying uh, due member to be able to enjoy at least some aspect of the PSB esports community. Um, I think it's fantastic, but I really don't want to take away from the idea that, like, I've been out for more than a year, uh, and I think most of that growth has happened since I left. So, like, <laughs> yay! I mean, I'm, I'm certainly happy to, to in, in some way, be attached to it and, uh, and to be, like, that legacy member. But seriously, it's been... You guys have been doing so much great work, and I, I, I always felt... I always felt like I could have done much more for the organization had I had the time and had I really had my academics in order so that I didn't have to pay such, nearly so much attention to them. Especially in the last year of college, I was so um, – my attention and was so pulled away by graduating that it made it difficult to, to put as much attention and focus on the club that I would have liked to. Um, but seriously, you should all be patting yourselves on the back for making it as big as it is. Uh, I had very little to do with that. A little modest there, but anyway, uh, 
Uh, what's new going on in the club that you kind of wish was around when you were here as well? Oh, um, the LCS being as legitimate as it is. Uh, we certainly had scrims from time to time, and we had a lot of in-houses, and that was great. But having a legitimate form uh, of, of uh, a legitimate and structured um, place for players to come in and immediately compete with one another, even just on a friendly level, that's the kind of structure that uh, increases faith in the system and gets people more engaged with each other. Uh, and uh, that's something that I would have liked to to create a long time ago. We may not have had the players at that at the time when I was still there to really um, satisfy that that uh, that potential. But nonetheless, it, I really wish that that had been around when I was still back at Penn State. Um, what was the, your first interest in league? Like, what got you interested in it? And then, uh, what got you interested in like casting the games for when we had our tournaments as well? Well, okay, so I, I should real quick um, bring up the point that, yeah, I, I did start PSUP Esports with the idea of servicing any esport that players were interested in at, at Penn State. Um, I did make myself the division captain of League of Legends, and it was no secret that my, my passion for League of Legends was primary and that I, I didn't want to split my focus and in doing so make my uh, effect on different divisions in the club lessened. I wanted to focus myself on League of Legends, but PSP Esports is far more than that, especially evidenced in the, the growth over the last year. Uh, and all those other divisions, like, I love those and that was great, but I, I really wanted to encourage them to, to uh, serve themselves and, and do everything that they can because my resources in terms of myself were limited and I wanted to make sure that I delivered League of Legends division the best experience possible. So... That being said, a lot of what I'm going to talk about probably in this interview has to do mostly with the League of Legends division. I just don't want to make it sound like I'm um, excluding the rest of the, the club. Uh, sorry, so that being said, <laughs> what was the question again? Um, just mostly what got you interested in League and what you liked and got interested in by casting the games as well. Oh, um, League, actually, I, I played Heroes of New Earth before uh, I ever played League. And I actually, of, of course, I knew... Um, Dawn of the Ancients. I know. I knew uh, Dota uh, before that, and I had played Dota, but like the community and the Warcraft three map was just so terrible, um, and the game was so fucking clunky. Like the shop system in in original Dota was just the worst thing ever. So uh, that turned me off of Dota. So I really only embraced Han, and I, I still do really enjoy uh, Heroes of New Earth, and I thought it was a lot of fun to play. Uh, that got me into the MOBA genre. League of Legends popped up because Brian Maynard, who was my roommate all through college had suggested that we give this game a shot. Uh, and it was not an immediate love. It actually really grew over time. Uh, but it grew pretty quickly. And, and during the course of, I think, six months, I went from playing it every once in a while to, wow, this is the, this is the game that I play primarily. And, and this is a, a way for me to uh, find a competitive outlet in gaming, which previously had never been on my radar. I had never really been a competitive gamer in anything that I did. I mean, I would be... If, if we sat down to play Smash at... Uh, <laughs> at a party, like, I would be competitive because that's in my nature, but I never sought that out in the game, and League of Legends delivered on that, and that was really satisfying, and it brought the, up this whole other echelon of gameplay that I really enjoyed. The shout casting came out of the the desire um, to literally, like, I just fell in love with uh, Day 9's coverage of uh, StarCraft 2, uh, and then more recently Hearthstone, and... I, I always, always admired his personality that he brings into his shout casting, and that's actually where the the idea of of kind of taking that role in League of Legends for me. All right, um, another question: Like many casters when first starting out, did you hate your voice initially when hearing it back and looking at old videos that you're in? Not from casting, actually. I I hated my voice long before that because I used to do um, recording for music and stuff like that. I did a lot of singing in high school, so I I had gotten over the phase of hating my voice many many years ago. Uh, so thankfully, by the time I got to shout casting, it was like I'm already used to this. Uh, there is, I should point out, a significant difference in how your tonal quality sounds singing versus talking, and then hearing that back played. So I, it, it was, it still took me a little bit of time to get used to what it was like for me talking. Um, but one of the things you quickly understand is that you, you have a non-negligible control over how that sounds and then learning how to manipulate that and, and really bring it into the area that you want to bring um, in terms of pitch and uh, tempo of speech and all those things uh, is challenging but really kind of cool to see the effect. That's pretty cool. That's definitely something that we'll have to tell the casting team once it gets together. 
about that it's like something you can't control except you just got to learn how to work with it. Yeah, so you there are there are hard boundaries to what you can do, but you do have freedom within those. Absolutely. All right, awesome. Um what is your favorite memory with the club and league in general? So I don't know if you can hear my <laughs> I, I recently moved. I'm um, sorry if you see a cat in the background. It's yeah, because no I love cats and we have cats now. Um, my favorite memory, I, I hesitate to always pick the the pinnacles. So I won't say favorite, but I'll say a really good memory. How's that? Right, that that's um, fair enough. The, the very first tournament that we ever held uh, in spring 2012. or I, Boy, was that spring 2012? Maybe it was summer 2011 we founded the club, and it was spring 2012 when we had the tournament. It's hard to to get it all. I think it was, yeah. I think, right, you, so spring, I think you were correct by spring 2012. It was in the hub, 2000, right? Yeah, it was in the hub, but we had the um, the first day, the Saturday matches upstairs in the third floor of the hub, and it was really ad hoc, and we threw it together super fast. Um, and I, it, it was at a point in time where... W- I had no idea. I had a vision of what I wanted it to be, but I had no idea the the precedent for it occurring, and I had no idea like um, what our actual capabilities were, what our budget could be, um, how many teams we could get to participate. It was all everything was like throwing stones in the water and seeing how the ripples played out. Like I, it was just it was playtime, and it was really uh, it was exciting playtime, and it, it was it was uh, nerve wracking playtime because if those ripples didn't collide in the right way then it would kind of be, be a disaster, and that could send a bad precedent for how things played out in the future. Um, but it was, I mean, we just, we did our best with the information that we had, uh, and casting that tournament destroyed my voice <laughs> and destroyed my body and made me sick, and I skipped all my classes on Monday, but it was undeniably um, so, so much fun and just a crazy weekend. Yeah, because I remember one of my favorite moments in League is uh, back when I was horrible at the game, two years ago, I was playing support for a team and we were in the, I think second floor hub, it was that one big open building where we had the casters and the audience in the same room as the players and it was right. just an amazing thing being able to hear <laughs> the players granted three minute delay but hear the audience like react to plays you made it oh, was I mean, a really crazy experience if you if you ever question why uh because it's a it's a video game, right? So if you if you were ever to question why it's important to have an esporting event live like that, all you have to do is attend one good one, and you'll know why that's true. Like it it's just like you would. I mean, you could have the football players play on a field that, and everyone else sits somewhere else and watches a screen to watch them. But having everyone together in any kind of sporting event, be it digital or 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 otherwise is always going to be a special experience. And it, it's, it was transformative to be involved with that for the first time for me. That sounds good. And uh, I have one last question. Um, do you have any big plans in the future or anything that you're looking forward to? Yes, I will be president of the world and I will colonize all of the solar system by myself. Wow, that's very ambitious of you. Um, yeah, yes, I will also live 3,000 years. Uh, I mean, yeah, I have a lot of goals. Actually... One thing that I've always struggled with is not finding things to like, but uh, discerning what of the in- large list of things that I like uh, is most important. Um, among my goals are, uh, at some point, perhaps start starting a game studio. I think that that's a dream that everyone kind of has. Uh, everyone has these ideas of wonderful things that they could make. Um, and of the all the all the artistic mediums that uh, appeal to me, which are most of them, uh, video games would be a wonderful outlet of expression that I would love to explore. Um, right now, I have the wonderful opportunity to uh, to get to work um, with the company that makes League of Legends, Riot, and that's um, like seriously an honor to kind of to kind of have that opportunity. And I want to um, kind of devote myself as much as possible to that for a long period of time, and not and during that period of time, not worry so much about what my goals are because. It is likely to be a mercurial and uh, fluid kind of um, involvement at, at Riot, and and I really don't know where it's going to end up spitting me out on the other end. Uh, so I, I'm just I'm kind of here for the ride right now, and that's fine. That's exa- That is my goal to let things happen. All right, that works, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, hey, thank you very much for letting me do this interview. Oh, of course. Thank you so much for for having me. Anytime. Uh... Make sure to come around every so often to see how the club's been going and uh, that it doesn't get too far away. Every from time, 
every time I come back, or even if I'm just um, trying to engage and play some games with people, uh, which I'm, I'm rapidly discovering I don't have nearly as much time as I'd like to to do, um, there are so many people that I don't know, which is excellent. I, I want the, the goal is that there are so many people coming in and becoming involved and becoming good friends and, and forming these relationships that I will come back and not recognize them. But it is... Uh, it's it's scary, and and I don't mean that in any mitigated form of the word. Like it is literally scary to see um, people that I have I have interacted with and have relationships with um, now having a spider web of different relationships across an organization that has involved new players that have have their own ownership in in PSUP esports um, and feel really committed that I never got a chance to meet, and uh, and that's fun. That's great. Uh, the the goal of the program is to create something that is self sustaining, um, but man, it, yeah, it literally scares me. <laughs> All right, well, hey, thanks again. I wish you best luck for everything that comes your way down your road. Yeah, I am. I will do my best to always be in communication. Like seriously, if you ever need to find me, if anyone ever is like, I need to talk to Trap, <laughs> I need to talk to Travis Ford DeCastro. Um, I'm Edwin Moles in in the client. Uh, on Facebook, you can find me. I'm always going to be a member of that Facebook group. Like, I am never off the internet, so you will always be able to find me. All and right. don't be shy. <laughs> Thanks again. See you around. Yeah, take care.